Hello there. Welcome back to the booth here at the World Magic Cup in Barcelona, Spain. That's Randy Bueller. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe, and it's all come down to one more round to decide who's going to make it into the top eight and who isn't. This is going to be an intense one, Randy. Let's head down to the feature match area where we have Guatemala and Denmark. Hello and welcome to coverage of the World Magic Cup. I'm Marshall Seckliff in the booth with Randy Bueller, and we have reached the last round of battle here before we cut to our top eight, and we've got a nice one lined up. Guatemala, you can see in their beautiful color jackets there. Sometimes you'll see some of the hats that they're wearing as well. They're absolutely gorgeous, and they have come a long way here at the World Magic Cup to this point. They're playing against Denmark. Now, as far as players go, we're going to start on our table C. That's Christopher Ver uh, Verula, who you just saw a moment ago. And, of course, you'll recognize that gentleman as Martin Dang. Now, the matchup here at table C is white-black tokens in Martin Dang's hands. He's playing against Verula, who is on red-green landfall, Randy. Now, I want you to tell us what's going to happen here as Denmark comes in for the third uh, round of pool play here at 2-0 and versus the 1-1 one and one Guatemala. Yeah, Denmark may be 2-0, and but they came in as a three seed, so they actually have not yet clinched a spot on Sunday. Uh, the winner of this match is definitely in the top eight. Meanwhile, there is a chance that Denmark could lose this match and still back into the top eight. In order for that to happen, they would need Paraguay to do them the favor of upsetting Belarus. All right, so this is... About as intense as it gets down in the feature match area here, and you're, you're going to see this unfold in front of you, especially with the team play as we work our way down to the final match. We are also uh, bringing you tables A and B, of course, Jose Andres versus Christopher Larson and uh, Wilfredo uh, Bajorquez versus Martin Mula on the middle table there. We're going to be checking in with them, bouncing over when it's appropriate, but for now, we've got a little bit of a fight here. Three. All right, looks like Martin Dang is actually on a Tarka Red. All right, so we've got that sorted out there, and it's the Red Green Landfall on the other oh, side I of the see table what's going here. On. He played White Black Tokens yesterday. Ah, gotcha. And they shuffled, they actually shuffled up who was playing which decks today. I mean, I'd feel pretty good with Martin Dang holding a Tarka Red. <laughs> <laughs> he did want a Pro Tour with it. He popularized the deck. That guy right there put that deck on the map in a big way. Pretty much. I'd be surprised they put him on white black tokens yesterday. I agree. The team did not get to change the decks that they were piloting, but they were allowed to shuffle players around. That's how the day two constraint worked. So Zergo Bell Striker for Martin Dang. And he's facing down Pretty aggressive start here. A Scythe Leopard and a face-up Den Protector on turn two from Varula. So we're going to see an attack here from Zergo. But what else? Well, there's a lot of options. Whew! a lot of Monastery Swiss Spears. I believe that Bloodstained Mire was off the top, too. I think Martin kept one land. Ah. Okay, well, he's going to kick things off with the Monastery Swift Spear. And are we going to see a Wild Slash here? No, just double Swift Spear, everybody in. Yeah, he's willing to trade one for Den Protector, if that's how Verula wants to play it. Okay, no blocks. No blocks. Four damage hits Christopher Verula. Christopher got 17th at Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir. He is the captain for Guatemala. Last year, they made their first day two hit the, here at the World Magic Cup. But today, they've got their eyes set on a much higher goal, top eight with a win here. A and a Pro Tour invite. This is essentially a PTQ finals for Team Guatemala. Well, and Denmark as well, for that matter. I mean, Mueller and Deng already have those invites. 
So maybe the stakes feel a little bit smaller, but they got a title to defend. Right, and still there's Christopher Larson and Daniel Lind who may or may not be qualified, so. Exactly. That's such a big part of the equation yeah. here too. Especially, you know, for countries that don't get quite as many PTQs, this is a huge opportunity. Like Guatemala, for example. Right. It's a big opportunity for these players, so. Just in case you wanted to ratchet it up a little more, <laughs> right? It's funny. The entire country's counting on you and your ability to get to the Pro Tour. <laughs> okay. And there's that third Monastery Swift Spear. <coughs> Martin Dang hits the red zone with <coughs> everybody. <laughs> now are we going to see Wild Slash? I, I gotta think so. Kill a creature and deal three extra damage. For red? <laughs> that seems like a good deal. <laughs> But no. He's not. You know, Martin Dang, I think he's just looking yeah, at this yeah, like, yeah. none of these are blocking. I want to get a blocker out of the way. <laughs> I think Martin feels pretty confident that he can win the race from this scenario. Yeah, he also can fizzle the combo, right? Yeah, if there's a great point. Become yes. immense team or battle rage, he wants to be able to respond. At least that's what he loses to here. Yeah, I mean, the tricky bit is Varula can point, could point that combo at a side leopard that already has three toughness. Yeah, I mean, he's cracking his Evolving Wilds immediately. It's got two toughness right now. When that land hits the battlefield, there's going to be a trigger, and this is the chance that Martin has to fire off that Wild Slash. The problem is it certainly doesn't disrupt the combo in that scenario. No, if there was a become immense, it would just work. It would just work no matter what. Okay, yep. but he does escape at six life here. He still needs to find a way. Oh, he finds a forest off the top. I think he's got an Atarka's oh. command in his he hand, does. too. He absolutely does. Oh, what a huge draw. Atarka's command wins it right there. So Martin Dang picks up game one right on time with that forest. You said it. He kept a one lander. He needed to get a mountain on turn two to develop his board with the monastery Swift Spears, and he finds the forest to take game one. We'll be back right after these messages. to draft with Magic's most powerful cards? Vintage Cube events begin Wednesday, December 16th on Magic Online. To play, sign up for Magic Online at mtgo.com. And welcome back to the feature match area here in Barcelona, Spain. We are down the stretch here at the World Magic Cup as we work our way towards the top eight and Guatemala at one and one in pool play coming into this round here needs to find the win. If they do, they're in. On the other side of the table is Denmark, who with a win secures their spot in the top eight. With a loss, well, they still have a sweat ahead of them. Yeah, Guatem Guatemala must win to advance. They have no, yes. no chance of backing it. So let's jump in here and take a look at what Wilfredo Bajorquez is up to against Martin Mueller. Well, it looks like he's getting beaten down pretty hard here. He's down to four life facing a significant board as Martin looks like he's taken his four color rally deck and turned it into a beatdown deck. Yes. Two lands left in play is all he's going to see with duress is Wilfredo. Yeah, it's not quite Martin Dang with a Tarka red deck in his hands, but Martin Mueller's got a pretty good track record with four color rally. Yeah, he does. The top eight of the GP. And Mark certainly has some big guns. Here is... Hangerback Walker returning to the battlefield, leaving up three mana for Wilfredo. Oh, and there's Jeez. a second copy yep. of Zulaport Cutthroat. Now, there is a response okay. that's going to happen here, though, and that's going to gain Wilfredo an extra four life. 
He reveals Colagon's Storm Fury. Yeah, but there's a Grim Harris Bex and a Zillaport Cutthroat. Martin does have to decide what to sack. Goes for the Cutthroat. Gets a trigger. That's going to knock Wilfredo down to four and then up to seven. Excuse me, down to three and then up to seven. Off of the uh, Foul Tongue Invocation, which does resolve. Oh, jeez. Rally. Rally. That was a good draw. Get everything back. Yeah, that's And that's finish game. you off. And Wilfredo can only shake his head. So Martin Miller now picks up his first game as well. And all of a sudden, the two Martins taking care of business, yes. trying to put Denmark in. And I want to remind you, they are the defending champions for this event. Yes, sir. Those of you who remember the Dane Blast felt around the world last year. They're coming back again. So let's jump to table A. This is the table we haven't seen yet. Jose Andres versus Christopher Larson. Larson's the, the one tokens, who's playing the white black deck. Yeah, this is the tokens. And as you can see. And you talk about the Martins, by the way, in this Denmark team. But uh -huh. Larson has three Grand Prix top eights as well. Yes. This is not like, you know, random guy that won a WMC. Yeah. Not this at is all. a European Grand Prix circuit regular. I have heard him described as super solid. So, yeah. yeah, so we've got Jose Andres, who is playing Esper Control here. Yeah, Larson not qualified for the Pro Tour either, so he would love this. So this Sunday berth is not just a team win for him, but an individual ticket to Atlanta. <laughs> Land go for Larson. And we see Ugin the Spirit Dragon for Jose. You take three, back down to 20. So he's got a long way to go to actually get him killed here, but with no board state to speak of, you got to feel like we came in right as Esper Control fully wrestled control of this game Doesn't away from Larson. Way. Well, here's a read the bones. Okay. That could help fuel a comeback here. And it's dig through time, but there is a response. While the shields are down, Utter End is what Larson found, and he actually takes out Ugin here. Yeah, he found the Utter End with Read the Bones and then sat on it, waiting. Jose Andres gave him exactly the window he was hoping for. Now, Larson could have waited here, right? Interesting. So something interesting from the floor here. Tim Willoughby, our floor reporter, says that Guatemala is offering a draw here. Huh. I, I don't know what that does in, in pool play. Uh, well, it depends on the Belarus result. If Belarus beats Paraguay, Belarus gets the 2-1, and Belarus would be ahead of a 1-1-1 Guatemala. So, I mean, essentially, an intentional draw clinches it for Denmark, but not for Guatemala. Wow, it's the kind of thing Guatemala should only do if they think they're beat. Think and they or may think that. <laughs> they, I mean, they may think they're beat. They may also, like, I, I have no idea what's going on in the match outside the future match area between Paraguay and Belarus. But if Paraguay beats Belarus, then all Guatemala needs is a draw. And, and that's true also of Denmark? Well, Denmark is in with a draw no matter what else okay. is going on. Looks like we're going to have an intentional I, I, draw. You know, I've, I, yeah, we're, we're, we're being told in our headset from, again, from our floor reporter, Tim Willoughby, that there's handshakes happening here. Now, it looks like this match is still playing it out. We're, we'll keep you updated as we know exactly what the uh, situation is. But I see Martin Dang. Yeah, look, if, if you're Guatemala, if, you, if you're going to lose, yeah, you can absolutely offer the draw because 1-1-1 one, one, one has a chance to beat Belarus, and 1-2 and will never beat Belarus. Yeah, and that could have been a scenario where, you know, one of the other players playing against Martin Miller or Martin Dang looked at their opening set right. and mulligan to six and thought, okay, this is not yeah, going well. Yeah. Six seconds. <laughs> These guys still look like they're playing, They're though. still playing, but I can see the other players in the background there, so they might just be playing for our benefit here. Yeah, it looks like uh, <laughs> they're having some fun with it here. This is just good old kitchen table style <laughs> magic here. Sure. <laughs> it 
it feels like you can uh, a relief of pressure here. And it's Gideon, ally of Zendikar, as we kind of move through here. So they basically felt, Guatemala felt, like their matchups were already not favorable okay. to them. And they were down a game in two of their three matches, so they sure. felt like with a draw, they've still got a shot. With a loss, they're out, so they offered the draw. That's, makes sense. Interesting stuff. Yeah, if they, if they wait until they're beat and offer the draw, they, they probably won't get it, right? Totally. Denmark has no reason to let Guatemala in. And you got to go there. And we see a big handshake there. So interesting <laughs> turn of events here down the stretch at the World Magic Cup. Now, what does this mean, though? This means Denmark is Denmark in. Denmark is in. So Denmark has a chance to run it back yes. and be back-to-back -back World Magic Cup champions yes. tomorrow. And, and you know what? They've been one of the favorites through this whole process. They're Whoa. still one of the favorites. We're down to the final eight, and Denmark will be there trying to defend their title. That's awesome. Guatemala's fate is now in the hands of Paraguay. And they have to defeat Belarus. Yeah. If Belarus beats Paraguay, Belarus is in. If Paraguay beats Belarus, Guatemala is in. Welcome back to the booth here. So interesting twist here as we see Denmark through to the top eight in our feature match area, perhaps in a slightly unconventional manner, but uh, in they go. So we've got one big storyline already going in to tomorrow for the top eight. Denmark, can they repeat? They have to be on the short list of favorites to do so. I, I, I have it at them in Japan. I actually, this morning, when we, were, when we still had 32 teams, my top two picks were Denmark and Japan. And now... They're both going to be playing tomorrow. Okay. Well, I can tell you right now that over at the news desk, Rich Hagen awaits. And I know that he's going to have a lot of updates as we start to form our top eight. Let's send it over to Rich. All right, Marshall. Uh, thanks for that. Yeah, it's worth bearing in mind that the phrase lot of updates is based on the fact that there were a total of eight matches this round and we're still well early in the round. So there aren't a lot of updates to bring you. That said, Ian, what we can do is just clarify again for people, especially who are going, that didn't look like the end of a match, and yet it was, mm -hmm. what's been going on. So, Denmark were at two wins. They knew that a draw would be enough for them to be through, and a win obviously would, but with a loss to two and one, it was possible that there would be three two and ones, and because they were the third seed, they could be out. So it was okay. possible for them to end up at two and one and in big trouble. Guatemala, they're the second seed. They come in at one and one. If they win, they're in because, of course, all two and ones, they're at top two seeds, right. make it in. So they're safe with a win. But they thought they were in trouble. So Guatemala says, here's the thing. If we lose then we're in really, really big trouble right. because we're, we're gone. Because we go to one and two, even if Belarus fall to one and two, they're ahead of us on tie breaks. I see. So Belarus being the first being seed. The in first the seed. Okay. So Guatemala knows that with a loss, they're gone, and they see the loss coming at them like the proverbial truck in the face. So at that point, Guatemala says to Denmark, how about we both take the draw? We know that's amazing for you, and it's probably better than the loss that you're about to inflict on us for us. So that puts Denmark at 2-0 and 1. Correct. Guatemala at 1-1 one, one and 1. Correct. And the deciding factor will be right. the remaining yeah. match in that pool. So now Denmark is through in, in Pool A. Denmark's there. Um, so at that point, three teams can still make it in. Guatemala on, if you like, one and a half <laughs> wins, for of a better term. Uh, and then Belarus will make it in. Paraguay can't because even though they go to one and two, they, they just can't get there. Mm -hmm. So will it be Guatemala? Will it be Belarus? That depends whether Belarus beat Paraguay or not. Okay. And if Paraguay do Guatemala a favor, then Guatemala's bonus draw that they've just agreed to 
gets them in alongside Denmark. I see. So we wait, of course, to find out what happens with Belarus and Paraguay. Now, in Pool B, we already knew that everyone was playing just for fun, essentially, in the last round, especially uh, for Austria and Thailand. They knew that they were going to be in no matter what. Okay. Ukraine and Serbia knew they were out no matter what. So Ukraine and Serbia are playing. Austria and Thailand shook hands, having, some, having a bit of a party at the moment. Um, Ukraine and Serbia are still going at it because pro points, money, right on the line. But they cannot make the top eight. Same situation in Pool C. France and Japan, we know, are in. And that was a bullet dodge for both of them in. Because if you're France or Japan, you don't want to face the other one in the last round of the tournament, sure. knowing that one of you makes the top eight and one does not. So they're through. New Zealand, Latvia currently playing. They're having a really fun match on one of the back tables. Again, playing for quite a lot of money um, and substantial numbers of pro points. Andre Pro's Jason Chung likely to want those. Yeah, I was actually just down there on oh, the floor. Right. Okay. They're joking around, having a great time. It seems like it's a much yeah. more relaxed atmosphere for them now. Which yeah, is awesome they, to see. they seem to be having a really good time with that. Um, and then Pool D is very much still in the mix. It's so much in the mix, we would love to get it on camera for you. Um, and that's certainly what we're hoping to do. Um, right now, Italy are in. They won their first two, they were top seed. So of course, in that means that they're done, mm -hmm. they're in. But then it got complicated because all three of the other teams could make it in. Scotland had no wins, but were the number two seed. So okay. if it goes 3-0 for Italy and everyone else ends up at one and two, Scotland, by being the top of the three one and two teams, uh -huh. would make it in. Um, much as Paraguay got to backdoor into the top 16, Scotland could yet backdoor into the top eight. But first, they have to beat Greece. They're going straightforwardly against each other. The winner there is in. Greece know that, of course, they're in. With a win, they'll get to two and one, mm -hmm. and then Italy would be two and one. And regardless of what happened um, with it uh, Italy and the Philippines, doesn't matter, Greece are in. Scotland need Italy to get to three and oh. Um, but we are going to get back in just a few minutes to that Scotland-Greece match. So you've got Grant Hislop. He's playing Abzan Agro. Uh, and he's up against Bill Kronopoulos with four color rally. Now, mm -hmm. we know um, from BDM talking to us about Bill Kronopoulos, all he wants to not play is Esper Dragons. Right. He's doing fine. Grant Hislop is playing Abzan Agro. So uh, Bill, and I'm pretty sure I actually watched Bill Kronopoulos win game one uh, in that one. Stephen Murray and Antonis Fisask were still going at, at game one when I headed over here. And this is a, a Jeskai deck for Stephen Murray mm -hmm. um, against that white black Warriors deck oh, uh, cool. for Antonis Fisask. I like that deck a lot. That yeah, that, that seemed like pretty cool fun. Um, and then the C seat sees Martin Clement with his black red dragons against Charlambos Kikidis, and that is a Tarka red. Cool. So, do you, do you have any sense if you were if you were going to pick a winner? From Absan Agro against Four Color Rally, who would you who would you favor? Probably there? the Four Color Rally deck. Okay, um, and then Stephen Murray Jeskai against White Black Warriors. Uh, tough to say. I haven't seen too much of the White Black Warriors deck. It's showed up a little bit in some other tournaments, but um, I won't I won't hazard a guess on that one just yet. Okay, and Black Red Dragons against a Tarka Red. Mm. Probably a Tarka Red, although maybe things change post-sideboard. There could be a lot of removal out of the Black Red deck. Okay, well, we don't know whether Scotland are in. We don't know whether Greece are in. We don't know whether Guatemala are in. We know Italy are in. And we also know that Thailand are in. And waiting for us across the studio is Brian David Marshall. And he is going to talk to a very happy man from Thailand. I am sitting here with Chomp Pasipachaya from Team Thailand. Yep. Team Thailand is into the top eight of the World Magic Cup. This is the best finish for Team Thailand so far yep. in this tournament history? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, this is the first time for Team Thailand to ever come to top eight. And uh, I know that you were saying that even though it's very late in Thailand right now, that uh, all the gaming stores yeah. are still open. Tell me what's going on in Thailand right now. Um, it's really nice. Everyone is supporting us from Thailand. Uh, it's almost midnight right now, I think. And they're still at the store watching live coverage and everything. Uh, all the Ma Thai Magic player, like, they're updating me. I don't even know that Austria <laughs> win already. They're <laughs> updating their Facebook status, like, oh, you guys are in, you guys are in. We're like, oh, okay, sure. 
Yeah, you, you, yeah, you found out, you said before. Yeah, <laughs> the live coverage is already going on. Uh, they're showing us a, their, uh, their support by like staying up late, watching every game, keeping us updated and everything. What, what's the message you want to deliver to the Thailand Magic community who have, who have been supporting you? What do you want to tell them about uh, what to expect from your team tomorrow? What to expect? I mean, we hope to win, but we can see like uh, all the top eight teams so far are very, very tough. Uh, we're quite nervous, but we're going to do our best and hopefully can make Thailand proud. Ner nervous has been kind of a theme for you. Yeah. You know, I talked to you before Team Sealed, and oh. you said nervous. Yeah. And then I said, well, you know, you guys did pretty well. You're going yeah. into Team Kushanti. You're like, oh, we're still nervous. Yeah. Now you're into the top eight, and you're still nervous. How, how ha have nerves been something that's been a uh, an X factor for you guys? I think so. I mean, it's good to be nervous. Um, it will keep us, like, on top of our games. but. We're doing our best so far. Yeah. And uh, t tell me, what, what, what will you guys work together? Now, you're all qualified uh -huh. for uh, Pro Tour Oath of the Gate Watch in Atlanta. Yep. You know, is that something you guys see yourselves working together again of going course. into that Pro Tour? Of course. Uh, uh, right now, like because of this tournament, the Magic War Tournament, it brings the four of us together. And we're hopefully we'll go together again at uh, uh, the Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's fun. Like we're here in Spain, we're getting lost in Spain. Hopefully, we'll go to Atlanta and get lost in Atlanta as well. <laughs> and I, I thought one of the things that was really amazing. Yeah. You said that the Thai Magic community really, mm -hmm. you know, you know they're supporting you, but they also really supported you yeah. in terms of getting to this event. You said the, mm -hmm. tell us about the the tournaments that uh, they ran to get you here. Uh, before we came here, they also host a tournament uh, with like all the store in Thailand, which like come up with the prize money and all the entrance fee for the tournament came for, for us to uh, travel and food and hotel and everything. Like, they really supported us, uh, making sure, like, uh, uh, like giving us, like, insight on how, how to get to Spain, like, do we get, uh, have we get a hotel? If not, they raise a tournament to support us to get, to get money for the hotel and everything. So only 11 nations have won a world team title. What would it mean for the community, for Thailand, to be the 12th team to become a world team champion? Oh, man, I, I hope what you're saying is true. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it would mean a lot. It would create more players to Thai community. I mean, right now, we have a really good community, but it's still not, like, the best trading card for, in Thailand scene. But if we win the World Cup, surely, like, it will be a big thing for us, and it will create a bigger community as well. Yeah. Okay. Tom, thank you so much for thank coming so down much. and sit with us. Yep. Good luck tomorrow. Sending it back to the news desk with Rich and Ian. Thank you. All right, thanks very much uh, to Brian David Marshall. Um, right now, uh, the, the Scotland match uh, is featuring many, many heads together over one board. Uh, it seems to be what's happening. That, to put it mildly, they are helping each other out. Um, and, you know, we want to bring you as much magic as we can. Tournament integrity, though, kind of important. It is a team competition, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we don't just take someone out of their team just in order to put them under the lights. So until that particular game is finished, we're holding the others. We cannot get them into the feature match area for you. We will attempt to do that. Um, just going to give you a sense um, of what's going on there, and I'm just like checking back here. I've got people in my ear, sort of, who are over there um, at the match right now. It looks like. Um, that there is one, one match is at 1-1, one, one, and the other two are both 1-0 for Scotland right now. Scotland up in two games, tied in one. Remember, though, that even with a win, Scotland are not guaranteed in. Uh, they require uh, help from the Italians to 3-0 the pod and to make Scotland the top of the one and twos. So Scotland ahead in two, level in one, and we will show you as much of that match as we can when we head back to the feature match area once we can get all of them over there, kilts and all. Uh, meanwhile, uh, over on the far side of the studio, someone else who doesn't need to worry about any more team play until tomorrow is the team captain for Austria. Six Grand Prix top eights to his name, many of them in North America, but he's back on European soil. Here's Austria's Valentin Mackel. All right, I'm here with Valentin Mackel. Austrian team, you guys are through to the top eight. Yes. Uh, tell me about your teammates. Tell me tell me who is going to be, we're going to see tomorrow under the okay. lights. Okay. Uh, 
first is um, uh, Nicolas Eigner. He is a like um, pastime pro. Like he hasn't been playing as much in recent um, years, but like. Um, there was a GP and he like just ended up playing because it was Prague and because he had like more interest in the game and he has still friends in the game so he played that and he top 16 it and that was must have felt great for him <laughs> after all this time that he still like, got it you know and then he played the World Magic Cup qualifier 1-1 and now he's here. And awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. And looking forward, I, I talked to him. I mean, he's definitely looking forward to getting back to the Pro Tour in Atlanta. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. He's uh, highly motivated. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and who are your other two teammates? Okay, then there's uh, Sebastian Fialevitz. He's a uh, he never been to the Pro Tour, and but he is uh, he wants to be there really bad. He played a lot of Moto. Probably he played more Magic than all the other teammates. Maybe combined. I'm not sure about that. Um, but. He tested a lot, and he was like always so close uh, making it uh, to the Pro Tour. He has like several old PTQ um, top eights and finals even, and from the new one last uh, season with the pre-PTQ PTQ system, he he won a pre-PTQ and uh, he like finished top eight at the uh, regionals, which like comes short because it was like a smaller one. Um, that I'm really happy. I was really happy for him when he won the World Magic Cup qualifier. Uh, in the first uh, qualifier, which um, uh, Eigner won, uh, he was in the finals. So, uh, and he lost to Eigner, obviously. Um, but then he won this uh, third one, actually. So I was really happy for him. And this will be his first Pro Tour experience when he goes to Atlanta? Yes, yes, for sure. I mean, I'm sure he will do great. I mean, he is not the modernist guy, like he likes like, standard like, and sealed, but... But he happens to know maybe a pretty good modern player. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I only take um, uh, what Patrick does and <laughs> copy it, you know. <laughs> Uh, it's really helpful that Patrick provides me with some <laughs> modern twin lists, and I maybe have gotten better with it in recent days, but yeah. And, and then your fourth the teammate? One, uh, is um, uh, Christopher Aukenthaler. Uh, he is not from Vienna, the other guy, two guys are from Vienna, which like I don't know him that well, didn't know him before that well, but he's really nice, and I'm happy for him for sure too. I Getting mean, back to the Pro Tour for him yeah, as well. Yeah, he, he won a uh, GP like two years, three years ago maybe. Um, so he was good. I wasn't too afraid that he'll uh, be like uh, that way to carry. So yeah. What, what would it mean for the Austrian Magic community if you guys could become the 12th team to win a world title? Oh, uh, I hope like the Magic community will grow, grow taller, like bigger and stuff. That would be great. I don't. I like know. grow taller. I like that. I grow, grow taller. I like, I like uh, yeah. the idea that they, you know, that, that you know, because it does it does lift up the community when when, when the team yeah. does that. We saw that for Denmark last year. Yeah, yeah. I really hope it does. And I mean. For sure it does because like four people are already qualified, more qualified, and that helps. I mean, having a lot of uh, local players at the Pro Tour is probably is a nice thing, you know. Okay, um, well, I'm, Valentin, I'm going to let you go celebrate with, <laughs> with your three teammates. Get ready Thank for you. tomorrow. So for Valentin McElbrand, David Marshall, sending it back to the news desk. Thanks very much to BDM and to Valentin Macker. We'll see him again tomorrow in team action. And of course, in it will be team unified standard all the way. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like teams did pretty all right at actually figuring out the logistics of the puzzle, which a lot seemed to rest around the fetch lines. Yeah, there were a few pillars of the format. We talked about the mana bases um, and how teams solved that. We talked about Jace. Um, and the fetch lands and uh, Atarka Ren also being a major pillar of the format as well. But uh, it was interesting to see some teams have, you know, little riffs on that. We've seen, you know, Eldrazi ramp, sometimes it's Naya ramp instead, sometimes the Atarka red deck is mono red, or sometimes it's Obzon aggro filling that aggressive role instead. Uh, various Jace decks to Esper Dragons versus Four Color Rally. Right. So there was a, a fair amount of diversity here despite the format being uh, relatively quickly isolated down into a few different pillars. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
Let's look at who is in and who could be in. Right now, a one, two, three, four, five, six, six teams are in the top eight. From Group C, that's France and Japan. I can tell you that their match is now finished and France took out Japan. France three wins, Japan two wins, a long way clear of New Zealand and Latvia who are still playing to see who finishes at one and two versus 0 oh and three. So France and Japan, but it does improve France's seeding. So of course the higher seed gets to choose to play. Yeah, which matters a lot. You because get to choose it's to play three lots three of blame. Of yep. Right, so um, that, that's potentially huge for tomorrow. France and Japan are through. The other pool we know about, you've heard from Valentin Mackel, Austria through and Thailand through. They were safely through at, at two and oh. They intentionally drew their last round. So that's the two pools that are complete. Denmark are now through, thanks to the draw with Guatemala. Uh, so that's number five. And that means that we then add one of Belarus or Guatemala. Paraguay can't make it in even if they beat Belarus. So if Paraguay win, they are Guatemala's best friend and Guatemala advances. If Belarus wins, they're the top seed and they are through at a comfortable two and one. Probably won't feel that comfortable though. Um, <laughs> but so those are your possibilities. Belarus and Guatemala are still alive in A to join Denmark. And then Paul D, and we haven't been slow rolling you, it's taken this long to get them there because they were in a deep, intense match. Scotland have a chance. Greece have a chance, the Philippines have a chance to join Italy. Italy are through. They're playing the Philippines right now. If the Philippines win that, Philippines will get to two wins, but they are a bottom seed, which means that if Greece beats Scotland, you'd have Italy at two and one, Greece at two and one, and the Philippines at two and one. But first things first, Scotland need to beat Greece and then see if the Italians can do them a favor. Mm -hmm. Let's take you back to the feature match area for bonus coverage of our final round here at the World Magic Cup 2015.